All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Oregon Energy Panel. This little incident that just happened before the start of this panel is a wonderful example to us. When we work with Oregon Energy, we transmute negativity. And I am not surprised at all that this happened. We have with us today a team of experienced and dedicated Oregon Energy workers and gifters. And these guys are actually changing the world. And we're doing it in a very subtle way that people don't even know. It's not political, and it's not on. It's not televised, and it's with complete anonymity until now because we're in front of you to talk about it. But we've been doing this work anonymously for a long time, many of us. These kinds of incidents, like we just saw, of unbridled negativity and chaos are a symptom of the parasitic infection of this planet Earth. And our beautiful, perfect Earth, and us, beautiful, divine beings. All of us are here to expand our consciousness, and we're all here at this event to increase our consciousness. We have seen many incidents like this throughout the course of these days, and I've never quite seen a, an event like this in my life. It's not like we expect because we are talking about 5D. We're talking about increasing consciousness and, mo consciousness and moving to a new way of being. So let's talk about Oregon. Oregon energy that we work with was first discovered by Dr. Wilhelm Reich in the 1930s when he found a bioelectrical pulse in his patients. And his work was emerging of science with spiritual thought because he was trained in science, he was a psychoanalyst, and he was trained in bio biology. And when he discovered this energy, what he was finding was what has been called chi or prana by ancient cultures for a very long time. People have known about orgone energy, but science had not validated it. And many people in today's world require that because they don't have that faith. And that's fine. We're working on merging science and spirituality. So when Wilhelm Reich discovered this bioelectrical pulse, he realized that this was our life energy and it changed his life. Learning about it changed his whole perception of the human race and his way of thinking. He realized this energy was so valuable and could be used in applications like treating cancer and ending drought, and he did this. The first application of this was to create an orgone accumulator, which is a box that people would go inside with alternating layers of wood and metal, organic and inorganic material. And people would go in there, and the box would actually harness orgone energy from the atmosphere, and people with cancer would feel relief from symptoms. And ultimately, his goal with this was to cure cancer through increasing our own life force, because it's the deadening of our life energy that causes so much disease. As many of you have seen Dr. Doug uncovering the cause of our pain in the emotional lineage that we have, that we have come to this point with. So he invented this organ accumulator. He treated cancer patients. He invented the cloud buster, which was a device that would concentrate orgon into the atmosphere and draw out deadly energy and make rain even in deserts and even during drought. This, he did all this work in the 1950s before he was thrown in jail by our government and had his laboratory destroyed and his books burned, and he died in jail in 1957. This work has been so suppressed for so long, and we know why now. And uh, this panel today is going to uncover so much about orgone energy. So a brief history before we go to the panel. So the discoverer was Wilhelm Reich. And in the 90s, Carl Vels invented Organite, a device that emits orgone energy. And it, in around the year 2000, Don and Carol Croft had the brilliant idea that we could make tons of these and distribute them everywhere to increase the life force energy of our Earth and to end the geoengineering because they clean the air and to neutralize deadly radiation because they were seeing in the early 2000s the cell towers going in. So today, we have an unorganized network of organite gifters. And these guys are making and gifting organ devices all over California. And it's because of this work that we're seeing the cleanup of the sky and we're seeing an increase in rainfall. 
and I'm, right now I'm going to have each of the panelists introduce themselves and just say a little about themselves and what they do. Hello, thank you for being here. <clears throat> and uh, Sharon and Abe, thank you for inviting me uh, down here to uh, speak to you about my uh, experiences with this energy force. I'm from San Luis Obispo, California. Uh, I've been uh, working with Oregon Energy and making Oregonite uh, for about three and a half years now. And I'm very, my name, I didn't tell you my name. <clears throat> my name is John Robson. Um, I'm very evidence-based, uh, a type of evidence-based person. So when I heard about <clears throat> the Organite, I started making it and producing it and giving it to people to see if I could get any positive results. And I started getting positive results. I started having people explain to me how it was working for them. And hence, that gave me the faith and the belief uh, in William uh, Reich's studies and that this energy force does exist and it can be used for uh, positive things for people and the earth. Shall I pass? Well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's introduce everybody and then we'll get into the meat of it. I, this one is working. Okay, good. My name is Harold Lunt. I make my day-to-day -day living as an electrical engineer so I also, like John, am very results-oriented. Um, my first experience with Orgone Energy was after reading some of Wilhelm Reich's uh, writings in the early 90s. So I went and built me a little accumulator. It's about this long. It was several concentric pipes separated by cotton cloth. And then I had the bright idea of wrapping the outside with wet chamois, and it dried real nice, and it looked like it's a cool little thing. I put it on my water, my jug of water, and I noticed that when I went to the chiropractor, and he was doing my muscle testing and emotional clearing, whatever, that he would always test to see if I was hydrated. And boy, I would like just tank up on regular water and still come up not hydrated, not fully hydrated. And I found that if I drank charged water, I only needed a third the water to walk in there and he would test and it was, I was hydrated. And I was like, wow. So I was impressed. So that was, and I, I thought about making bigger ones and, and putting electrical energy into it and making it faster and bigger and better and everything. But there were some things that, that made me a little cautious with it. So I held back about in the early 2000, 2000, 2001, whatever, I went online and my gosh, there was Organite out there that was doing everything my accumulator was. And I went, oh, that looks a lot easier. So here I am. My name is Gabriel Cohen. I am uh, Sharon's partner. Actually, Thursday is our four year anniversary. So. Uh, <laughs> Four more years. <laughs> anyway, um, I am also an Organite gifter. We've been working with Organite since April 19th, 2014. That was the very first time we made it. And we haven't looked back since. We make all kinds of pieces, including the Tower Buster, the classic. And uh, we gift it all over the state. And uh, we've probably gifted about 2,000 pieces thus far. And uh, soon we'll be branching out of the state of California and hopefully then out of the country and uh, ever further and ever beyond. And that's what I do now. I, I am a Los Angeles native and I was a session musician. I guess I technically still am, but uh, I've given most of that up to do planetary healing full time as a Sharon. And uh, that's. That's where we are. I'm very glad to be here, and I'm glad you all can be here, and looking forward to talking about this stuff in greater detail. Great. Well, Harold, what was your inspiration to make the, the device? Like, what drove you to, to try making your own Oregon device, even before the invention of Organite? Well, it... Uh, I'm having to, like, reconstruct my time track here. I... <laughs> 
I'm something got me going on silver colloid, okay, which was like how they fought cancer and, and all disease before antibiotics came along. Um, and connected with that somehow was something that got me looking at, I, I honestly don't remember mm -hmm. what triggered me onto that. Some, somehow I got pointed to, um, to Wilhelm Reich's stuff and I read about how he built his accumulators. And one of the problems that made me worry about it was he talked about how deadly orgone energy could accumulate in these accumulators. So I thought, I'm experimental enough to like try with my health and everything else to see what goes because I figure I'm going to heal anyway. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm built backwards than most people. I don't expect to die. Uh, <laughs> I'm 68. I grew up in a farm in Arizona. You know, what do I know? I <laughs> so I'm willing to believe that I'm eternal and that will continue to be so. And I am. Of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, so, so, and I'm an engineer, so I was like, you know, I started electrician, I played with electricity, I've been shocked probably too many times. Uh, so I, I just figured, I want to figure out what makes this stuff work. And so I started playing with it, and I actually put some pulsating DC in it after I got the, the cotton layers really wet with salt water, and wow, it, my whole body just like was like glowing for days after that, it just pumped out so much orgone energy. And I like, did I just kill myself? <laughs> and I didn't. Uh, it, it, was, it was like, okay, this is like not so bad. But I still didn't understand the deadly thing. And so I held back with trying to do it. I used it for myself. It obviously worked. But yeah, like that. Well, just so you guys know, I think a lot of you know about Organite because I've talked about it all the time, but the Organite works like this. It contains a crystal, usually a quartz, but you can use any kind of crystal, metal shavings, and a copper coil, and they're embedded in a resin. And they work because the crystal contains orgone energy, which is also known as scalar energy. That's what, that's what a lot of people call it now. And it emits that, but when compressed in a resin, the squeezing of the resin on the crystal amplifies that effect and the metals broadcast that out so and they're very durable too so they're made in a polyester resin and they're very durable when we put them in the environment to do their work john robson makes chembusters this is don croft's model and the chembuster was designed after wilhelm reich's cloudbuster but unlike the cloudbuster the chembuster doesn't have any negative effects so you don't need to be a professional to operate it. It's, it's safe for everyone to use. So, John, you have made many combusters and gifted them in San Luis Obispo area and in Los Osos. And I wanted to know if you could tell us about um, how they work and tell us about how many you've made and where you put them. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I consider that myself, I became conscious uh, in about 2006, and I, I became conscious in 2006, and about 2011, I took it upon myself from a couple websites that I visited to start thinking about this chem trailing that was going around uh, the United States, and I thought it was like a chem trailing that went one over Arizona or one over Illinois, and I was like, let's take a look at the sky and see what's going on above me, which people most mostly do not do because they're looking at these new devices that we have now. And I started looking at the sky and I was shocked to look that I saw one plane and two and three and my blue sky went away six days a week. And this really bothered me. And I was driving around in awe, seeing what was going on. And my daughter, who is very conscious, she said, you know, dad, there's something you can look on the internet and make, a machine that you can make to help mitigate this chemtrailing that's going on. I was thinking about you know, something you would plug into the wall, and do this contraption. So I got on the internet because I was concerned about this because I saw this happening in front of my eyes. Things were going into the air right above me, right above, this was the air that I breathed, that the neighbors breathed, that everybody on earth breathes, politicians, everybody, which doesn't make any sense. 
So I started producing these machines and uh, I put my first one up and I was actually uh, rather shocked at what I saw. The very first couple of days I saw absolutely beautiful, huge clouds, like the most magnificent, huge clouds surrounding my house. Somebody told me oh, those were UFOs in cloak. Um, and then I had some military helicopters flying around that concerned me so much. I went to the military camping store and bought some camouflage material and drove home from work to put it over the machine because I was so concerned that I was going to be found. That kind of wore off and I started making more. And I have six of these from uh, Big Sur, California down to Reseda. And every time that I put one in someone's yard, and I, and I do this just to help the earth. I, I, I give them away. And it's also fun to see the results, to see how I'm helping the world, because it's hard evidence for me. This isn't some thing that I, I kind of believe or think. This is real. And I've improved the skies over my house, 19 to 23 blue sky days now, from one a week to 19 to 23. And I, and I document I've been documenting for years, every single day, what it looks like. And progressively, I'm getting two to three days more per month because of people gifting around California, because of the, the, the machines that are going up. Every time I put a machine in someone's yard, if they're home, they will call me and say, there's a helicopter that's buzzing my house for like 30 minutes. <laughs> Because somehow they, they, I'm, this is, you know, some of this is speculation, some of this is not. Some of this is hard evidence. I've, I've experienced hard evidence with this and these helping this situation that we have. I, I like to call it particulate spraying. I don't like to call it geoengineering because that makes someone believe that they're helping with this global warming conspiracy or chemtrailing because I took uh, rainwater samples to to prove to myself what was going on. I want hard proof. I took rainwater samples and I sent them to a heavy metals lab in Houston, Texas. And I asked them to check for the things that the internet was saying that they're spraying. And I came back with 20,000 parts per million of aluminum and 239 parts per million of barium. That second number was 12 times what the EPA would allow. Aluminum is the most occurring heavy metal on earth so that number is a little arguable. That was my hard evidence. Should I pass? How do they work? How do they work? Okay. <laughs> this is how I believe they work. And this is going to be speculation. This is a spiritual symposium. And what we've heard to this, these past few days, we've talked about our heart. We've talked about faith. That has a lot to do with what we're doing here on this earth. If you believe, I mean, if you believe in something, it's going to work. And that helps with these machines. That helps with these. You've heard about placebo effects. They give someone a pill and they believe it's going to work. So guess what? It works. So, you, so faith is, is mankind's most important tool. I believe that there's crystals. There's double terminated crystals that go into each pipe. This is an organon, this is organite basically, it's organite with one very large crystal in the middle and six pipes. You slide in these double terminated crystals. I believe that it turns the atmosphere from a negative Oregon state to a positive, number one. Number two, I also believe that it changes the positive ion polarization to negative because we all deal better in a negative polarized environment. You can buy little things you can plug in the wall that you can purchase and it, it changes positive to negative ions. The oxygen, the oxygen molecule bonds with the hydrogen molecule in a negatively charged field. And I believe that they're spraying what they're doing is to charge the atmosphere positively. Now, when I st first started noticing what was going in the sky, I'm like, why, why are they doing this? What, what is this? Are they, is it for global warming? 
Is it to protect nanotechnology from solar flares or coronal mass ejections? Is it for sterilization? Is it to balance out the change of the Schumann residence? It was nine months ago where my records show that they sprayed like mad right before it rained. We know that we're in a tremendous drought sometimes in some parts of the world. We're improving that. It dawned upon me this is about rain. If you can control the water and the food, you can control the people. Think about the trillions of dollars that you can make off of water. Water is more expensive than gasoline now. So I believe that they're spraying this aluminum and barium to keep it from raining. Now, I've seen planes go above, and there were two trails coming out of the one plane. Sometimes there's four, and sometimes it looks like there's just big one huge one. But I've seen two trails, and one trail changes completely different from the other, leading me to believe they're spraying other things. This is about, the, no one would put this money into this program without profit. This is about profit. I, I just want to add to that, though, that their technology costs about $5 billion a year, and ours costs a few thousand dollars a year. And ours is much, much stronger than theirs. So we can put a few thousand dollars a year into Organite around California and completely negate their efforts to destroy our rain. And that is what they're doing. But I just wanted to talk briefly about the first time that Gabe and I made Organite. We had horrible chemtrails. We were so depressed about it. The sky was whited out. We had crisscrossing lines everywhere. And we finally just said, why not just try it? We've seen videos online. We've seen images where it looks like it's working. But what have we got to lose? So we bought the materials to make a muffin pan of six. And within 15 minutes of them curing and not even done, the sky started to turn blue over our house. And over the next hour, that blue expanded in about a mile in every direction. So we are seeing the cleaning effects because it does what John says. It does create that healthy, negatively ionized atmosphere. It promotes rain, and it throws the nanoparticulates into space away from Earth because it creates a vortex which does that. It also neutralizes the EMF because the chemtrail spraying is the visible component of an energy war. The energy is much more important for us to know about, not that we shouldn't know about the chemtrails, but it's the reason we don't remember the energy is because it's invisible. So we have to remember there is an invisible war going on. I wanted to ask Gabe about the strategy of gifting because we put Organite in specific places. So what are, what are strategic places to place Organite and what precautions should you take when deploying them? Cell phone towers, extreme precautions. <laughs> um, EMF, for those of you who don't know, stands for electromagnetic frequency or electromagnetic field. Uh, those are the biggest sources of toxic energy pollutants that are on this earth, namely cell phone towers, as I mentioned. But they also exist in our home. They're Wi-Fi routers, smart meters, CFL bulbs. There are many, many sources. And what we did at first was to remove the sources in our home. We got rid of our Wi-Fi router. We started plugging in directly with, uh, with cable. Uh, we turned our cell phones off at night. And we don't have a microwave, so we didn't have to worry about that. We reversed our smart meter, which was huge. Los Angeles is actually a surprisingly easy city to get that accomplished in. And then we started branching out. We went to, uh, we went to the worst parts of Los Angeles, Compton, Southgate, I hope none of you are from there, but uh, <laughs> they're very impoverished, very low energy. Like Sharon always refers it to a low ceiling. Like you feel an oppressive layer above you. Can't really put our finger on it. It's just something that you sense. And we would go around, and inexplicably, there would be the heaviest concentrations of cell phone towers in these poor neighborhoods, usually next to schools or hospitals, you know, the good places. And uh, 
we would go around and one three ounce tower buster placed within a quarter mile of any array of panels will neutralize the harmful energies coming out of it. And not only that, it will turn it into a broadcaster of orgone energy. So it's actually better than before there was even a tower put there in the first place. So we would go around on our, <laughs> on our bicycles. <laughs> on our bicycles, because these things are sometimes cleverly disguised. I mean, clever being a relative term. But <laughs> so we could stop on a dime and just go down a little alley or wherever we needed to, to go and just, you just hide it. If there is a bush, you stick it in there. Or if you bury it if you have to, anywhere where it's not going to be dug up. And, you know, you, you do it covertly. You don't want to, you know, be like one of those cartoons where they're just standing there and they go like that, <laughs> and where everyone can see it. But we do many different things. We've busted by car, in which case I'm just chucking out the passenger side window. And that's, that's pretty much what we do. Well, there are actually many functions to organite and orgone energy. Besides cleaning chemtrails and neutralizing EMF, it's also a consciousness expansion tool because it's our own life energy we're working with. And that's actually a huge reason for its suppression is when you have access to something that unlocks your power, that's the scariest thing to the parasites that rule our world. Harold, what is the primary reason for your gifting and what's the most important result that you feel we can accomplish through Organite Gifting? One of my favorite analogies for Organite is the saying, uh, some of you have probably heard it, uh, a rising tide floats all boats. Uh, every boat in the harbor rises with a rising tide. We're ri raising the tide across the planet or in your neighborhood. You can put these, put one under your bed and notice what happens to your dreams. I don't have to tell you, you will notice. You'll be more conscious. Well, you just go do it. Don't, don't, we won't talk. You know, you can believe it and you can talk about it, but it doesn't really change for you until you do it. So buy some organite, start gifting your house, your life, and the, and the cell phone towers around you. So what I notice, I'm, I do a lot of meditation, deep spiritual work. I help people with past life regression and finding their, their problems that got started, you know, how many centuries ago. Uh, and we, we clean that up. But I notice that whatever I'm working on, as soon as I go out and gift the planet, help Gabriel and Sharon or go out and do it myself, Carmen and I on our way to, to San Francisco or whatever, that within a day, whatever I was working on spiritually moves away on him onto the next level. This is like one of the most empowering things that you can personally do in your life to change not only your life, but your environment. And who wants a bad neighbor? Go give him some organite. Go plant it around his, <laughs> his house, you know? Who wants a bad police department? Go bless them. <laughs> Go give them some. The more negativity that there is, the greater and stronger this stuff works. It's like, can you believe the Aquarian empowerment that we're getting for the, for the Aquarian age where everybody gets to help everybody? <laughs> it's here. It's right here. <laughs> It really is a wonderful thing because we gift and people don't even know we've done it and they see the positive changes. So we can actually benefit everyone and it in turn benefits ourselves. Exactly. Uh, you can go on the internet to organizeafrica.com. Uh, George Richel, Richel uh, is probably the most prolific gifter on the planet. Uh, 11,000 and counting, I'm sure. Uh, all over South Africa. He's broken droughts that have been in Namibia of all places, which is like the driest place on earth, I think. He's got it to rain there, okay? Uh, <laughs> the guy's phenomenal. 
he and a partner were gifting Soweto, which is one of the black townships where poverty and in, in, in the huge negativity still persists or did. He said as they drive through the hatred that was aimed at them from everybody they made eye contact with and didn't, just they, they were afraid to stop the vehicle. But they gifted every tower and everything they could in the neighborhood and left. He said three weeks later they came back through and people were out chatting with each other and smiling and laughing and talking to each other. And as they drove through, people were waving at them and inviting them into conversation. So consider yourself empowered. That's exactly right. It's so beautiful. It opens up your heart energy. That's what I've noticed. You're opening up your own energy. And you're opening up the hearts of everyone when we do this. Um, I wanted to ask Gabe back to you um, about how you incorporate your intention in prayers because when we make Organite, it's a functioning device. It's a free energy device. It works no matter what. But what you put into making it, and we all do that when we make Organite, how does what you put into it affect the work and the functioning of the Organite? It's very much, very much a part of that because the Organite will always function as a device. When you gift it in nature, it's there and hopefully undisturbed and will be there continuing to do its work. But I always send these every time I chuck out of a window into the great unknown. I always give it a little blessing before I do so because I know that every piece that goes out is one more nail in the coffin of the parasites and one more nail in the coffin of the engineered California drought. And every single gifting that we do I I feel obligated to do something to put my energy into it. I, I know people who are not in the correct mindset, and they make Organite, and they complain that it doesn't do anything. Or they make lots of Organite, and they see one or two chemtrails, and they just say, oh, it's not working. Uh. I'm sick and tired of hearing that because your intentions and your mind can go hand in hand with this and they do go hand in hand with it and when you when, when you have your intentions going out into the world this amplifies it a hundredfold a thousandfold or more it's it I can't quantify exactly what but you won't know until you do it. You won't know until you try it. And I had a friend recently, a friend of a friend, who had what, what Sharon and I called the chemtrail blues. <laughs> Down in the dumps, completely angry, miserable, feelings of hopelessness, feelings of despair. Just completely the wrong headspace to be in. And it got so bad that... Uh, we unfollowed him on our blog because <laughs> we couldn't take the negativity showing up in our news feed at, at the prolific rate that it was. But uh, about two weeks ago, we got an email from him, a big, long, huge email. And just paraphrasing, he said, I got it. I get it now. And he snapped himself out of it. I, I don't need to go into the specifics of it, but he immediately noticed clearer skies, a clearer head, clearer headspace, and just ge general clarity in multiple aspects of his life. And I was so glad to hear that because that's just a small example of what can happen with, with you or with anyone. Maybe not that guy who came in here at first, but even uh, him, even, even yeah, him, that's true. everyone. <laughs> yes, I, I was being facetious, but yes, even <laughs> even some even someone who is who is acting like that, who even the worst energy vampire you could imagine. And this goes back to uh, what Harold was saying: you gift your neighborhood, 
you don't even need to tell people that you're doing it. They don't, they don't need to know about it. You don't need to ask their permission. You just do it, and you just see the results. You see the confirmations. We'll take questions at the end. Um, I, I do want to add to... I do want to add to that that one of the reasons for our friend's newfound freedom and one of the reasons he said in his message was he no longer felt the need to convince people that the chemtrailing was happening because we are the ones who see it and everybody calls us crazy. But we don't need to convince anyone because we have the tools to stop it and in the process increase the consciousness of everyone around us. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna ask each of the panelists. Oh, did you have something else to? Add? I was just gonna say there'll be a quiz on all of this in ten minutes. <laughs> I just wanted to go through and ask the panelists. Um, organite gifting is a very exciting thing, actually. We're literally fighting an etheric war. We are actually warriors. There's a website called EthericWarriors.com. That's Don Croft's website, and it's a forum. And you can actually, all these, um, I link to all these on my website, so at the end you can grab a card and all these are there. But it's ethericwarriors.com. That's what we are. We're fighting an energy war, and we're fighting it with energy. And the energy we use is pure love. It's life force energy. And the only way to win is through pure love. And if you put pure love out there, you will literally can stop a chemtrail just by putting that intention. You can watch it stop. I do this all the time and it's really fun. So gifting, it's a very exciting thing actually. You know, we're just chucking things out the window but we feel so much when we do it. And we all have an unusual encounters at some point while gifting because there are many forces against us. There are many people or entities that don't want to see this energy shift happening on Earth. So I want to just go down the line, starting with John, to just talk about an organite gifting experience. I know you also put organites into your environment, besides the chembusters. Have you had any unusual encounters, be it with a, a flying craft? We get followed sometimes by helicopters. And um, we'll just go down the line. I wanted to ask John, and then Harold can also explain how we deflect those encounters. <clears throat> Well, most of my experiences uh, that were kind of hard, hard evidence is with the, the chem busters. I, um, I started gifting probably, a, oh, probably nine months ago, uh, speaking to Sharon. She's very, very active in gifting all around. So I started gifting my town. Um, I started gifting my town. Uh, every quarter mile, I already got a map and started putting little red dots on this map um, to, gift, to gift my town. I haven't really come across any, any odd or strange thing while doing that. Um, I just try to put it in a place where it's going to land softly in a bush or an ice plant where it will uh, stay undisturbed. But wherever it goes, if someone picks it up and throws it in the trash, it's going to go somewhere and, and continue to work wherever it is is going to continue to work. I've had, you know, many people come over to my house and since I produce I produce so much of this, it's all over my house. And many times it's very odd. People come over and they say, "Wow, your house just has a really neat feeling about it." It just it it I just feel comfortable and and they like say these super nice things about my house and I'm wondering if, it, if it's just the paint. <laughs> like the, you know, earthy colors in the 70s are back and I went tan and brown and the, the Brady Bunch colors. Um, <clears throat> but mostly my experiences are with, are with the busters because I haven't really been, I haven't produced as many as a thousand uh, uh, TVs, but I, I, I have pinpointed cell towers. That's my big thing is cell towers. I, I, whenever I travel and I see a cell tower, I hand one to my partner, she whacks it out the window. Um, that's cell towers and then just the, the chemtrailing stopping. That's, that's my experience. I will share one experience I had. Uh, as I said, I grew up in Arizona. We were back visiting my hometown. I've still got a lot of good connections there. And I thought, you know, what kind of hypocrite would I be if I didn't gift my own town? You know, so we found all four cell phone towers for this little town of 1,200. 
wow, that many cell phones, really? Okay, <laughs> all right. So, I, but I knew from my previous experience as a lineman uh, for the county, that county of Greenlee, uh, literally I was, and uh, we had our repeater up on Guthrie Peak, and you could, there was a really bad road, the four-wheel drive to get all the way up there. It took an hour and a half to get it. And, uh, uh, but I knew that the, the highway patrol had their repeater up there too. And, I, and I'd heard that there were, and I could see driving by way up there that there were other antennas up there. So I figured three or four more cell phone antennas up there. So I talked my buddy into going up there. And they now have a nice wide gravel road that takes you 15 minutes to get to the top, right? So we thought, well, okay, cool. Let's drive up there. We did. We started putting what we call an earth pipe, which puts orgone energy into the earth. We'd just driven the earth pipe in. And I looked back down the road, because you could see the switchback coming up to the road. And there, coming up the road, were four identical white SUVs in train following one right after the other coming up to the top. There was no other place they could be going. And I went, what a dummy I am. We have a thing called a sucker punch. It's spelled S-U-C-C-O-R, which means mercy. It's a sucker punch. But it's a Mobius coil wrapped around a big quartz crystal that is fired with pulsating DC on the Schumann frequency of the Earth at 15 cycles a second. They say when you're gifting, turn one of these on because it creates a white noise around you, a psychic white noise bubble. And shall I say evil psychics? The bad guys can't see you. They can't read your intentions. I figured this is Greenlee County, Arizona. I know that yeah, there's four cell phone towers in Duncan. You know, we've already gifted them. What's the problem? So I didn't turn it on. I had it in my vest pocket but I didn't turn it on. So I get up there, I look down, and I see these four identical white SUVs in train, moving up, eating each other's dust. I mean, they are right behind each other, coming up the hill. And I went, how dumb can I be? You know, so I reached in and turned the sucker punch on and said, we better get busy because there's 13 cell phone towers on top of this freaking little peak, and we need to gift them all. So we started scrambling around. Now, we were putting... Um, holy hand grenades. It's, it's not nearly this fancy. But we were putting those in places. We were putting tower busters around. And we were just finishing up. And I thought, wow, those guys ought to be driving up any time now because they had to make that whole... They had got to the point where the last run back up to the mountain was out there. And they were turning around after I turned on my sucker punch. Or they figured we were already done and it wasn't going to matter. They, what could they do? I don't know what was going on in their head. I was impressed. <laughs> Carmen was there. She saw it happen. I asked Carmen, I says, do we have enough organite on the peak yet? She goes, she muscle tests. And she goes, nope, two more. <laughs> we got, so we did it. And it was done. So... Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a tough act to follow. Oh, we had a really crazy thing, though. The pressure's on. <laughs> no. I, no, no, I, I do actually have a story, and it's a recent one. Um, it's a good one. I'm going to tell the full story, Sharon. I, I'm going to tell it start to finish. Uh, this was from mid-August, so a month and a half ago, tops. Um, we... Uh, I don't know if any of you saw Victoria Vivas at this event, but uh, she's, she's done a few talks. Um, back at the end of June, we did a talk with her, and uh, it was very nice. And uh, anyway, we were contacted by uh, a nice lady out in Penn Valley. Her name is Crystal. She's right over there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she, she said that uh, a friend of ours, a uh, friend of mine wants to have you over to, to do a talk at her house for a bunch of people about Organite and, and solutions to chemtrails and EMF. And anyway, we went back and forth a few times. And it was right about this time that we, uh, we happened to go to uh, 
geoengineeringwatch.org, which is Dane Wigington's website. And we found out that there was a large event up in Reading, a, uh, a chemtrail conference of, of sorts. And uh, there's this, a little thing about that website that just always struck us as not quite right, as being very fear-based and not offering any solutions whatsoever. So we figured, let's rent a car and kill two birds with one stone. Let's go up to Reading. Let's pass out flyers there offering solutions to chemtrails to these people. And then let's go do this talk. So we called it Occupy Geoengineering Watch. <laughs> uh, Dane didn't like that. No, he, he didn't. He didn't, and he, and he disliked it so much that he called Sharon, pleaded with her not to do it, then threatened her with police action should she choose to do it, and then went back to pleading again. That was the gist of the conversation. We did it anyway. We... And we gifted 300 Tower Busters yes, to on, Central and Northern California in the process. On the drive... <laughs> On the drive up through the Central Valley, we, we gifted the whole way, and uh, we, we went up and, uh, and we went to this event, that low ceiling I was talking about, we felt it. There was a nearby forest fire, so the sky was all gray and it was muggy. It was, the, the vibes going on were just horrific in a way I couldn't even explain. So we got there and we see a bunch of signs saying, uh, we have the right to re remove people. We have, we have the right to kick people out, something along those lines. So we left our signs in the car, and we went as observers, as spectators, to this conference at this auditorium at a high school or a college. I don't know which. And we watched as military personnel, ex-government employees, politicians, Congress people, various governmental people went up onto the stage and talked in very vague terms about doing something, but not in any meaningful way and not offering any solutions whatsoever. So uh, when intermission came around, we went out by the hallway and as people were coming out to get some air or have a smoke or whatever, we started handing out our flyers. If you come back to our table when we're done, you can see the exact flyer we handed out. We handed out between one and 200 of those before they caught on and kicked us out, told us we had to leave, which we did. We're, we're not, you know, we don't want drama. We don't want any arrests. We don't want anyone to get hurt. We just, we did what we had to do. And we knew that if even one person gets a hold of that flyer, and breaks themselves out of the spell of fear, then the whole thing is worthwhile. And it was. So we went back. <laughs> the story's ending soon, I promise you. Uh, we, <laughs> we went back to, anyway, we went back to uh, where we were staying. We ended up doing our talk. And, and we left right afterwards. And on our way back on the five, Normally, Sharon drives, and I chuck out the window because I have the baseball arm. But uh, she was a little tired, so I went into the driver's seat, and she started throwing. She couldn't have thrown more than two or three when next to us, and this was, this was at night, so it was pretty much completely dark. A craft of some sort was... We were going 70, 75, you know, whatever the speed limit is on the five there, was pacing us. A light was shining down on the field. No dust was being kicked up. No noise was being made, so it couldn't have been a helicopter. Very low to the ground. Couldn't have, couldn't have been, what, more than 10 feet off it the ground? It was a few found? feet off the ground, and it just came up next to the car. Came up next to the car, ran parallel to it for... What, 10, 15 seconds? Yeah, a few seconds, so? and it had black tinted windows, and it looked like a helicopter, but I couldn't see inside the windows because they were tinted. Did a more than 90 degree turn and veered off into the fields. 
We actually had our sucker punch on at this time. Um, Harold introduced us to the sucker punch because we were gifting naked, as he said, before that. So we thought it was enough to turn off the cell phones, but that wasn't enough. We turned them off and we wrap them in foil now because cell phones are always transmitting location data, even when they're off. Believe me, if, if and, I gifted naked, nobody would bother us. So. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, I, I might bother you, but... Well, that's all right with me. <laughs> anyway, we, we used to get followed a lot uh, and harassed and energetically um, attacked. We would have Cessna planes flying over us. We'd have our phones off, but it wouldn't matter. They'd be buzzing us. There, there, there would be crazy energy things going on. We'd be arguing with each other for no reason about nothing. Mm -hmm. And... We got the sucker punch. We had it on every second of our trip, just about. And that was the only harassment that, uh, that we got the entire trip. Well, I want to talk about um, positive changes. <laughs> and just, just really quick, going back to what you were saying, if anyone's taking notes, Organize Africa is, has the British spelling. It's O-R-G-O-N-I-S-C. with an S instead of a Z, because those crazy limeys. Sorry, no offense. <laughs> well, I want to talk a little bit about positive changes, because there's a lot of dwelling on negativity. Yes, we have problems, but we are working step by step to solve them. And Don Croft believes that the widespread gifting of Organite will end global tyranny. And I agree with this because I've seen the changes that it makes in consciousness. And we can't end global tyranny by fighting them on their terms. We, by using violence, we'll never get anywhere. By getting angry, we'll never get anywhere. And actually, one of the things that struck me the most in Dane Wigington's talk, because we attended the event and as spectators, and I actually took notes and wrote a news story about it, but one of the things that he said was, we must use our anger for fuel. And this really hit me. Because I have found that, that I used to be so angry at chemtrails and so depressed. And all of this seemed to just make it worse, really, because what good does it do? And for those of us who are wide awake and aware and we see it, the chemtrailing actually acts as psychological warfare at this point. Because we're all aware enough to know what's going on. And if you have Organite, you know how to get rid of it, which is great. But for those of us who don't, you know, we, we see it and we feel hopeless. Um, and so... It, it's actually a psychological effect, which is even stronger than the physical effect of the metals. So we've seen that through distributing Organite, we've made incredible positive changes. I want to talk a little bit about this, uh, starting with, with John. I really have seen that the distribution of Organite is changing consciousness in a way that we will overturn this tyrannical rule. So uh, what are some positive changes you've seen in your community, John, uh, after the gifting you've done? By putting a piece of organite in your house, you're basically gifting your house. You take this, you place it in a field anywhere. It's the same thing as putting something, it's, it's you're gifting your house. Um, when I first got involved trying to prove to myself, what is Oregon? How does it work? Does it work? Um, some of the positive things that were shown to me where I was, I, was producing, I was producing pyramids for fun. They look pretty. They're nice, mixed, nice you know, paperweights. So I started playing a, kind of a, a little trick to my friends and said, hey, I'd like you to go home and sleep with this. And they said, well, what is this? I said, well, it's, it's just this little thing that I made. I'd like you to sleep with it and tell me if anything happens. <laughs> and they're like, OK, see if anything noticeably happens to, to your sleep. And this was when I was thoroughly convinced that this topic, that Oregon energy exists and it can be used in positive ways. So some of the things that came back to me from these people, some of them, they sweat. They were like sweating in their sleep for days. Now, as I go on to explain these other things, these other things that happened, I believe that it helps process things from your past. 
It helps process things in your subconscious mind. Um, I gave a buster to a guy and he was very skeptical. His sunflowers grew crazy. His neighbors were like half the size. He says, what are you doing to your sunflowers? Your tomatoes are gr growing like huge. Your chilies are growing huge. This was hard evidence. His little daughter would crawl into bed with him and sleep, and she would wake up and start talking about <clears throat> these spiders, these dreams of spiders that she, she had. It was her fear, her fear of spiders. She was processing, I believe, she was processing these, these fear of spiders. Some people have very sexual dreams. One woman said, can I go to prison for some of the dreams that I have when I sleep with this? <laughs> I'm not making this up. This is real stuff. Um, some people handed it back to me the next time they saw me and, get, and said, get this bleeping thing away from me because they had horrible nightmares. It causes lucid dreaming. I gave one piece to one guy. Uh, we were camping in the woods. I put it in the river and charged it. I mean, I'm sorry, cleansed it really well in this river and then put it in the sun. He had the most astounding response of all. He did not know if he was in a sleeping state or an awake state talking to me. He had a very hard time. He was trembling. This was even more proof to me that Oregon energy exists and it works and it can use to benefit your life. Oh, I, I just wanted to add something about the nightmares really quick. I have a powered Oregon device called a rest shield from Kenrola. And when I first used it, I had the most insane dream. And it was absolutely terrifying. I actually went into hell. But it was actually located in a Taco Bell. So anyway, Same I can thing. tell you guys. Yeah, I know. They call it Taco Hell. But anyway, um, it was very, very vivid and very, very hellish with lots of satanic symbolism. But I only had a bad dream for one night, and I processed through whatever I needed to process. So it does, it can do that. But uh, you will eventually get through it, and then you'll see more clarity. I just wanted to add that. I just wanted to go down and ask uh, you guys, Harold, positive changes you've seen uh, in your community from gifting or just around. Well, you know, I, I can say, talk on a personal level here in our house. Um, everybody who comes to our house goes, wow, it's so peaceful here. And we've got one of these in the backyard. I've got power wands, which is like a mini buster. Uh, we got one of those upstairs that fills a whole house with Oregon. I have one of Carl Welch's uh, donut things that you can tune to exact frequencies. Put your head over it, and it feels like warm air breathing in your face. Uh, that That's on. I've got organite scattered all, you know, it's like there's no <laughs> chance. You will feel better when you walk in my house. <laughs> uh, like it or not, you even my most negative, uh, you know, there's one in every family. Uh, I've, I've, got, I've got a brother that... Girls come up to you and say, I don't want to be around you. I feel dirty when he, when he like, even wants to touch me. Or, you know, and it's like, that's my brother, okay? It, he comes in and he goes, wow, Harold, your home just feels just so nice. And he was actually pleasant to be around while he was there. It's like, <laughs> and Carmen and I just look at each other and go, mm -hmm, yeah, okay, <laughs> all right. So uh, we'll be taking questions really soon. Okay. Like so, really soon. I, so we actually as, are almost as, done. As to the right. neighborhood, I just assume it's all going to get better. And I really don't look. Uh, the sky's supposed to be clear and blue with puffy clouds. And so I, I just, I'm sorry, I don't look at my neighborhood that much. I just figure it's going to be great. I smile at everybody I meet. I'm a happy guy. Yay. The biggest thing I notice is the return of rainfall. And that's the engineered drought I was mentioning earlier. Um, California set records for rainfall in May, June, and July of this year. And that would not have happened without the mass organite gifting that's been going on citywide, statewide, countrywide, worldwide. And it, it's only going get, to get better from here. Um, 
Harold, Sharon, and I went out to San Bernardino a couple weeks ago and uh, gifted at least 100 of these. I, I estimated about 125 or so to that city, namely the cell phone towers. And uh, a couple days later, we had two inches of rain. For five hours, it poured in September. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And of course, the news tried to blunt and defray that good news as much as they possibly could, as per usual. Mm -hmm. But uh, the truth of it is that the engineer drought is, for all intents and purposes, already over. But we have to get the reservoirs and lakes back up to their levels, which, which is happening. The whole El Nino nonsense is just an excuse for the Oregon work that's being done. Um, some other things I notice are quieter neighbors. Um, definitely, definitely see that in our neighborhood. Uh, we see all kinds of things. We see definitely a reduction in chemtrails. I, I'm going to echo something John mentioned, is that uh, we were at a point two years ago where we would have one clear day per month, and the remaining 28 or 29 days would be mild to serious chemtrailing, or in some cases, just the, the thick chem cloud cover, not necessarily strictly trails. Now it's the opposite. We have gifted so much organite, we've made so much organite, we now have 28 or 29 or 30 days of pristine skies per month, and there's maybe a day or two days where they spray some trails futilely but they can't, they can't do what they want. They can't guide in the systems that they're detonating over the ocean. They can't do it. Anytime you see the dashes, the stopping and starting, that is orgone energy destroying their stuff. Mm -hmm. Anytime you see the corkscrew trails that they're falling apart, that's orgone energy doing its work. And we've seen that, we see it more and more. And, and we, we've documented this on our site. And the thing is, we don't ask anyone to believe anything that we say. We just record the evidence, present it to people, and everyone uses their own discernment right. to find out what's true and what's not. It's, it's good to know that not every weird thing you see in the sky is them doing it to us. That's a victim mode. We're doing a lot back to them, and it does look weird because we're seeing new types of clouds that are the result of what we call geo-restoration. So on my site, I have some pictures. I'm going to be adding a lot more with detailed explanations, because I think people really want to know what, what are these strange clouds we're seeing. Not everything is bad. A lot of this is actually the, what it looks like when we clean geoengineering out of the sky. So I wanted to open up to questions very soon. Um, I just wanted to add one more thing, which is that because we live in an energetically unhealthy world right now, we need an energy supplement. This is an energy supplement to help you to quiet that noise and bring back your own power. Because if we didn't have all of this bombardment of EMF and toxins, we wouldn't even need it. We wouldn't need to take vitamins and supplements. We'd just get it from our food. We wouldn't need organite because we would have access to our own orgone within ourselves. So this is actually the tool of opening consciousness. It's the reason it was suppressed because the parasitic rulers, and they're not really rulers, they want to be rulers, they think they're rulers, but they're not. They only rule because they've suppressed our knowledge of our true nature, which can defeat them in a second with love in our hearts. And they're freaking out because of it. Absolutely. They're only, they are only reacting to our ascension. If we weren't ascending like this, they wouldn't be reacting in this way. We've had, we had a chemtrail heart sprayed directly over our house twice twice <laughs> i wasn't sure what it meant the first time i was a little creeped out then the second time i i thought maybe it's a, a, a symbol of something or a signal whatever it was it was weird but we're very much involved in what is an etheric war an energy war and there are other energies and other entities involved and at this point it doesn't even matter who they are. What matters is that we dispel the negative energy. 
what Wilhelm Reich called deadly orgone, which is a strange term because orgone is actually very positive energy, so it's a little confusing. He called it DOR, what's coming out of the cell towers, fluorescent lighting, you know, all this EMF from, from our cell phones, Wi-Fi, et cetera, and the chemtrails themselves are deadly. Nuclear radiation, these are DOR, but orgone actually transmutes it. It actually transforms it. It restructures the EMF and makes it coherent and safe. We still want to get rid of the EMF, and we have to work towards that and eliminate it in our lives. But in the meanwhile, we have a great energy supplement that can help us. I'd really like to, I know there's going to be a lot of questions. We have about, yeah. When she mentioned the heart, that reminded me that we had a perfect omega sign sprayed right above my house. And it hit, it hit our local news, it hit Facebook, and it was, it was really, it was amazing. I don't know how they made the turns doing this. They must have had a very small plane because they couldn't use a 747 to, to, to draw this Omega sign directly over the Ralphs, which is just right down the street from me. Anyway, I just remembered that. Yeah, I remember that too. Well, well, they're really, really f flipping out right now. And actually, we saw one just this morning that was curved. What happens is, we've seen this ever since we started working with Organite, is that they'll draw some chemtrails to draw in systems of toxic geoengineering aerosols from the ocean. And when we first started, we were able to delay this. Now we can actually stop it, like most of the time. When we first started, we could delay it. So we would dissolve all the chemtrails so their system couldn't come in. Eventually they could bring it until we had enough organite to stop it. But one thing they do, and they think they're tricking the vortex, is instead of spraying lines, they start spraying these dramatic curves, thinking they can trick it. But the curved chemtrails still fall apart like the rest. When you start working with this stuff, get ready to see some crazy things. <laughs> you, you will. You will. So, I'm going to go in the audience because I know there's questions. I saw hands raised earlier. I'm going to go and yes. Oh, and you guys, we'll, we'll share this one. There we go, back here, okay. This is the first hand that went up. Oh, this is the first hand I saw earlier, so you'll be first, and then you'll be next. Can you clarify, um, you know, the cloud buster, you know, California needs rain, obviously, but if you're busting up clouds and if it's clear skies overhead, there's a lot of confusion and mystery. You want to generate clouds that make rain, so can you clarify the cloud buster? Yeah, there's two things. There's a cloud buster and then the chem buster. This is a chem buster. This is not a cloud buster. Um, I love clouds. I don't want to disturb them at all. But this actually um, produces negative ions, so it will attract moisture and attract uh, the hydrogen molecule to the oxygen molecule to create moisture and create rain. So this is not a, a cloud buster at all. It's a, it's a cloud. I'm sorry. It's a chem Chemical, chemical buster, chem buster. That is correct. Correct. It encourages. It encourages moisture. That that was a very good question, because there is a, a difference. Um, yes. Um, did you you want your next? Okay. Well, I wanted to add one thing to that. To to my understanding is that. <clears throat> As far as cloud busting is concerned, the verb bust in this instance is not like destroying, it's, it's like busting it open like, and allowing, as John said, the moisture to flow through. Yes, Wilhelm Reich did call it cloud busting when he would make rain. That's what he would, yeah. yeah. Okay, we have a question. Uh, thank you. I'm really impressed by all what's, uh, all what's going on. And um, I'm a believer. I ended up buying a disc uh, a few years ago at a Conscious Life Expo and I have a, a a pyramid, a disc, and a pendant. Uh, after a while, I was keeping it in my car, then I kept it in my backpack. Now, I was seeing this chiropractor a couple months ago down in Hermosa Beach. She's not an ordinary chiropractor. It was applied kinesiology and energy healing and all this stuff. And he said, something in your backpack is affecting your energy. So he went through everything, and he found that the, my pyramid and my disc, he, he said, it's affecting, your egg negative, it's affecting your energy negatively. And he told me to remove it. And, and I, I was defending. I said, no, this is good stuff and all this stuff. And he said he did a blind study test. 
put it in the bag and take it out of the bag. I won't look, and then we'll test it. And it, it's, it seemed like my body was going negative with the organ. I was wondering, I'm a believer, I like to believe, but other than me, why was it coming up negative for me? Okay, I can take that question. Um, energetically, we are creating <clears throat> the, um, the reality that you perceive right now. Each one of us, and we, we link up with each other, and so we have shared realities and things like this. When you bring any energy augmentation into your energy field, you will make adjustments. You'll notice changes. But after a certain length of time, and it, see, it, it varies for individuals, but after a certain length of time, you will adjust to that and consider it normal. And whatever growth needed to occur for you that that kind of masked, you will not get the opportunity to grow through that until you remove that from your energy field and allow yourself to grow through it. And so you're both right. Uh, and maybe you'd had it long enough that whatever growth you got from bringing it in first, which you knew was working, you need to like wean yourself from this for two or three months and watch what changes and then bring it back in and watch what changes. Because we all get used to something and we, we all want everything to hold still. Most of us fear change and we need to let that go. And once you see that there's no more change occurring, then change it and watch what happens. But that did sound like you just got, you got used to, to this and it uh, adjusted to it. He noticed that. I've had some very productive sessions with uh, applied kinesiology. It's, it's amazing stuff. But if he's noticing that, he's probably got something there. And so take it out for a while. Put it somewhere else in your environment. That's a very good answer. Based on reality. And Paula. Thank you. Great panel. Um, if you want to help, is there a place to find a map or, or in your town um, where cell towers and stuff are? Because like you said, you went up. How do we do it? We could drive around. Actually, there, there is. Um, it's called, I think it's an, antennasearch.com. Yeah, I don't use it because I don't want them to know where we're going. Because you know they're looking at everything you look at. But you can. Antennasearch.com has every, it's supposed to have every cell tower in it. Like I said, I haven't been there. I don't want them to see me going there. Yeah. Just drive around. Oh, uh, Kathy, you had your hand up for a while. I want to just mention, um, I have a, a chem buster, but it's half the size. You saw it. I, and I don't know, do I need another one like that to make it changes? Because... I still see the chemtrails up there, and it's it, today was massive. I gotta say. Yes, they, oh, they today was important. especially for us here. I believe this is. <laughs> into their hands again from Congress. Okay, well, let, let's not worry too much about Congress, but. Um, <laughs> my space in my patio it's perfect I put water on it today and I burn the sage and I just see this little white butterfly coming by after they after the um, uh, sage was burning yeah. because the sage is a special item to uh, alert animals and nature to come out in from their hiding or I don't know something I'm just yeah, well, that, this is something a lot of people talk about. Like, why are there still chemtrails? Who would like to answer that question? You want me to answer it? I'm just going to say this, then I'll say it really briefly. They will never stop spraying. That's what they do. We clean it. Some days they spray more than others. Some days they run out of steam. Right now we have a tremendous consciousness raising going on in California. And everything going on in this building for the past five days is affecting the entire world energetically. They are bombarding us, especially right now. Don't let it get you down. We just keep cleaning. We clean. They, they, they spray, we clean. That's how it works. And eventually, the more of us have our power and understand that there's nothing to fear, the spraying will be less and less and less because they can't do it. 
Well, no, I, I, I wanted to follow up on, on uh, the question that, that you had real time. quickly. Um, I did read <clears throat> from some research on the internet that the length of the pipes will work different altitudes because the planes will be flying in different altitudes looking for that sweet spot for the line to stick and to spread. And so I did have uh, a machine that had on every other pole a three foot extension to work two different altitudes. Or you could just put some ex three extensions on every other one. Someone can help you. I'm sure we'll find the help you need for and that. Then, and then lastly, a lot of people. it's like wrinkle cream. It'll greatly reduce, but not eliminate. <laughs> it's serious, it, it will greatly reduce. It could reduce it down. It might eliminate it for 23 days of the month. But you might see some for three days. Well, that, make, that makes total sense because if they're continuing to bombard, we can clean it, but if they put another one there, you'll still see one. You know, we just have to have, you just, just understand that it's working, it's cleaning, it just takes some time. And if this is a process. We need to get critical mass with the amount of organite. There will be a point where they literally can't, but now they still can. You got a question. About I know, and I had one here for a long time. I'm going to go here. Mm. Go uh, right just so you know, Don Croft has the who probably gifted probably the second most on the planet uh, has a cloud buster. I call them cloud busters because that's what some of the salesmen do. Has one that's about four feet tall and a little organite bulb at the bottom, and he puts it in a little donut and he aims it around. He puts it in his car and aims it in front of him to clear out to literally to, to or on his boat. He went recently down past Cuba down to the Yucatan and used it to to open storms up in front of him and calm the weather and he ties it on his airplane when he's gifting from the from the air uh, to again to sweep the area in front of him with orgone energy uh, it'll work it's exactly like John says it may reduce but probably not eliminate all the chemtrails but and they talk about doubling the length of these and aimed them at the moon to take care of some alien bases there. Now, I don't know how real that is, but <laughs> that's what they did, and they saw some changes. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thanks. I'll, I'll keep it brief. But um, one of the things, well, um, a couple of things I was really impressed by was the fact that, you know, you were all sharing, and, and especially, you know, you were saying that if you, say, for example, had like a budget, okay, here's how much organ I can gift in a year. The thing that's, that's impressive about that is that that number is cumulative, because, like you were saying, it's perpetual energy. It's always cleaning and filtering. So if you say, oh, I can do this much per year, it's cumulative. It's stacking on itself. Whereas, you know, the, the sources that are creating the chemtrails are always starting from zero. Yeah. They have to, they, yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. They have to start from zero every time. Someone has to get in a plane and they have to do it and everything is depleting. And they have to do that from scratch every single time. Whereas Organite is compounding. Like, so... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, that was one thing that I was really, you know, um, you know, impressed by. Another thing, too, is I wanted to kind of just build on what, what Harold was sharing. And um, I've had a lot of people that, that I've worked with and doing, like, you know, spiritual work and consciousness work right before I got the call and certain things are going to shift. They have crazy stuff happen in their lives. And then there's this big opening and then things are different afterward. And I feel like it's almost like if anyone's done a cleanse here, if you do a fast or cleanse, you really feel probably like you're getting sick, like you're getting a fever, you're getting chills, you're all this other stuff. But exactly, you're detoxing. And it's not like you're getting sick, you're becoming aware of the sickness that was hidden within yourself right. to be passed out. And I think that it's really powerful to know, and especially like what Harold was saying, like really there's no substitute for your awareness of your energy and how you think and how you feel and say moment by moment, is this serving me best now or is it best to serve me, you know, like in this way and just, you know, keep, keep dancing with it and seeing what, what has the greatest effect. Because it's almost like if you have a candle and you light a candle, it might look just like pure white wax. If you light it and it heats up, it becomes clear and you can see all the little bits of this little specks of old wick in it. You weren't aware of that until it was heated. And I think the vibration is a catalyst. And when you raise the vibration of everything, everything becomes more clear and you might think, oh, there's more junk, but no, you're just having more consciousness. You know, so. Thanks, Paul. Thank Thanks, you. Paul. That's a great observation. We have a question in the Wait, back. Wait, can I grab a pen and write all that down? <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you for your patience. Where can we get some of those little resin things and how much do they cost? I'll take that one. <laughs> uh, John and Sharon and myself are both selling organite in the uh, in the main room there. Well, there's two rooms, but we're, uh, we're yeah. <laughs> we're we're selling as soon as we're done here. We're going to go back to our table, and we'll be there for uh, the balance of the day. These tower busters are ten dollars each. These are super affordable. These are rough pieces for gifting. They don't need to look nice because they're going out in nature. We have uh, we have other pieces that are more for the home. These we have bulk yeah, discounts, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, because we have people bulk who discounts give. on the tower busters. We have other pieces like these little pyramids for the home; those are twenty-five dollars. We have a whole price list; they're very affordable. We encourage you to come by. We we would like people to have them. Yes, there's a question. Of yeah, I just wanted to say that when I moved in to, with John, and we, I started sleeping in his bedroom. I was having <laughs> no, and I used to just sleep perfectly. Organite is short for orgasm. <laughs> it really is. And it, it actually is. is. It really is. It, it actually is. is. <laughs> That's it's true. true. It's um. True. Anyway, I noticed. Hey, there are children here. <laughs> John would wake me up in the middle of the night because I'd I would just wake up crying, and he'd say, "Honey, honey, it's okay. You're having a dream." And for a couple months, I was waking up with uh, these, these, these dreams that were um, so powerful. And uh, I was processing everything. And after a couple months, it was just like it was done. I had finished with it, and the processing had cleared out. And so much uh, stuff in my life has cleared out since I've been sleeping with it. But that's what I noticed was my dreams were powerful, cleansing, and... Um, and that's, yeah. Sometimes I have to go into the other room and get out of the bedroom because it was like I needed some sleep. But, um, yeah, they're, they're very good for um, processing in your sleep. Thank you very much for sharing that. And actually, it's true, though. Um, it actually does have to do with the orgasm. Uh, Wilhelm Reich did a lot of work with uh, sexual repression. And a lot of the reason for our illnesses um, is because we are sexually repressed and when we don't have that expression and we're afraid of our own uh, feelings then we we actually our energy our our own orgone energy contracts and this, the feeling of contraction manifests as fear anxiety and illness and in a state of expansion that's when you're healthy and well and happy and that's the state we want to be in but in order to be in that state we do have to work, we have a lot of work to do on ourselves. And we do have to be open to feeling. We have to be open to our connections with each other. There was a question. Yes, or. I stick it between the mattresses. I stick it between the mattresses, right under my heart. I, I just want to say, you know, you were saying about those products up there, the, the little organites. To, can you go through each one and um, can you just start, just itemize them? Okay, if you want it on, if you want to get an organite for your body, this is what you need to get. And then go down to, okay, for your house, this is what, you know, would be good for that. And if you can give the range, how many would, do we need for a 13 square foot house? And then go to the backyard and then go. So if you can just go down to all these different, you know, energy well, I, I feel I feel like we could do a much more coherent job explaining that to you at the table. We could take a little bit more time to well, yeah. to go over those things. But I could just we say have, briefly. You can tell them briefly yes, what we have. We, we have pendants like the one Sharon's wearing. I wear one all the time just for my own personal protection because we're out in the world and we're surrounded by dangerous energy. So just for myself, I keep it on. We have small pyramids. We have large pyramids. Again, we have the tactical pieces that are just as good. You can yeah, do a house those are one with of the this. You can do a medium-sized house with one big pyramid. Uh, I like to have them at the corners of houses. So you can have four small pyramids at the corners of houses. 
You There's can, no right or wrong way to do it is, yeah. is another important thing. It's you, just whatever yeah. you feel. If you have a, it's nice to just at least have a small pyramid next to your bed when you sleep. And if you're on a budget and you can't afford pretty pyramid, a tower buster pretty much does the same thing. It's the same stuff. It's just simpler. It's cheaper to make. And it's rough, but it works the same way. So anyone can have Organite because tower busters are affordable. And get that Wi-Fi and cell phone off. Huge. Yeah. I have a question about the Wi-Fi and cell phone because um, I live in an apartment building and absolutely cannot get away from the Wi-Fi and cell phone because all of my neighbors, of course, have it. So I, I have <laughs> the a decision whole bunch is of unanimous. Those. I have a whole <laughs> just bunch put of one those. on it. Just put one of these on it. Have it there all the time. Okay. It, it will so help. so I'm going to be completely protected or a lot protected. A lot. It's it's never going to be complete because it's still putting it out, but it will one tower buster will mitigate the harmful energy coming out of it. Same same with the cell phone. There is there is an area where it's still putting out deadly organ radiation, but once it's busted, once the organite is there, around it is a safe zone. So it will reduce, but it will it's like the wrinkle cream. It will reduce, but it won't eliminate. And cleansing the pieces also helps. Underwater, just rinsing them for a few minutes, recharging them, yeah. prayers, intentions, that sort of thing. Recharging the oh. Correct. Yeah. Okay, we have another question over here. Here's a good organ science experiment. You know, they, they found in Europe that if they put a plant near a Wi-Fi router, it quickly dies or it has difficulty um, staying green. So it'd be interesting to take an, a plant and an organ generator and a Wi-Fi router all together and see what happens. Yes. Uh, uh, on Organize Africa, George's daughter decided to do a high school experiment with cell phones. And they put the cell phone next to some plant, uh, some seeds and put some organite next to this another batch of seeds and documented what the sprouting rate was and the growth rate and it was phenomenally obvious that uh, a cell phones aren't healthy and b organite really helps oh what do we do at the tomato plant at home let me bring you the mic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, this thing took over the next door, next door neighbors. Go ahead, Carmen. So we have a cloud buster in our backyard. And these tomato plants, the original one, I bought like a little Home Depot plant. And that died, you know. I mean, but then from the seeds, and our cloud buster is like not even five feet, ten feet away. What would you say? I don't know. Not that far. From the seeds, we ended up getting like three giant, huge cherry tomato plants that went to the neighbor's yard. Over the and fence. they wouldn't die for like five years until I yeah, had to kill the them because I was tired fence, of them. I mean. And I had to cut them down going like, let's give some other ones a chance to grow. But literally, they just got huge. It was like having tomato bush like on steroids. And that was, it was. Viagra. <laughs> yeah, Viagra for okay, Viagra. I'll come back over here. So I had a bit of a Chapman meme. Um, just the importance of getting the aluminium out of the body, because even if you you know you've got the EMFs that are being um, you know sorted out, if you've got aluminium body, it really needs to get out, and the 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 organ pendant will balance the body and it will help you detox the aluminium yourself. Honestly, it really does work, and it's so important because the side effects of aluminium is neurotoxic. And uh, with sensitive people, it can give rise to suicidal thoughts when the suicide rates are going up. And uh, friends of ours have taken their own lives. So, so do get the pen. Men, wear it under your shirt. If you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. OK, one more over here. How much time do we have? Five or so. OK. I was just wondering if you might like to share your business idea. I've heard uh, what I consider a really great business idea from Sharon and Gabe over the last few days. Gabe, do you want to do you want to field this one? Okay, but Gabe, you came up with the name of it, which I love. Okay, 
Gabe came up with a name for our business idea because it's something we do anyway. <laughs> it's called Sky Cleaners, cleaning your sky and your kitchen. We come to your house because I already do this anyway. I can come to you and do an energy consultation and look at your home and see where are the dangerous EMF sources and help with organite medicine wheel and to see what your home needs. So we've actually done this for a friend. We went to his home and we gave him a gift of organites around his property, which was about an acre, right? Yeah. And then we cleaned his kitchen, which really, really needed it. And so we thought, this is a great idea. We'll just go over and clean the energy. And then while the energy is doing its thing, we'll clean the kitchen. And by the time we're done cleaning the kitchen, we should see some real changes. So, it, but I am, I am that available. That kitchen to, needed it, cleaning more than the sky. Really, it was the worst kitchen, but anyway. We cleaned his kitchen. Yeah, we, we cleaned it. Yeah, we scrubbed it, scrubbed it down. <laughs> yes. So it we actually was. We didn't pull the fridge out or anything. No, we didn't go behind, behind the fridge. That, but, but we did a very, very good job, though. And while we were doing it, we were, you know, enjoying watching the chemtrails go away and nice big blue sky opening. This was out in Antelope Valley. And they're very hard hit. So it was very, it was, it was, we placed organites all over the property. And we saw, the, we saw the clouds with the drop coming, the dropped clouds, the, yeah, and a lot of the curly stuff. That, that is the orgone energy. But it's the, even, we even do work. more than that. Like for Kathy, I made a medicine wheel because you already had certain devices and helped you with the four corners of your house and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, anybody can do it intuitively. If you want help, I can help. Are there more questions? Oh, there's a... <laughs> moving from that because, like you say, the orgone has the energy to change the energy in the atmosphere. Yeah, so I see things are moving. Wind will come instead of this. Dry, yes, those are the confirmations. Heat. Those are the confirmations you'll see. All the, all the time, we see the same thing. I think, Sharon, we have time for maybe two more. I was more. just going to say a comment because she was asking, like, minimum how many. I would think, like, from what we've done, minimum, like, one on each corner of your property and at least one in the house. So, and not necessarily, you know, if you don't have enough to get one in each corner of your house and a corner of your property, I would just go property so it can be as spread out as possible. And your house, that way it'll, it will, you know, five minimum is what I would go. That's what I say too, because I think it's important to put them at the four corners of the property and then have something in your house to help with the EMF inside. You had a question? Just wondering, uh, I'm sure that it benefits animals, but did you have any experience, anything, anybody? It's a cat's dog. I love this question. Yeah, take this one, I love Sharon. this question because um, I actually made organite pendants for pets, and I'm going to be making more. And I started with my, my cat, who was elderly, and um, he was 16. He lived to be 16 and a half. And starting around the age of 15, he started to get respiratory infections. And be before, before we were able to clean the sky, he was having breathing problems when he went outside. So I started making sure he wouldn't go outside at all, especially when they were spraying. But um, he was starting to get a respiratory infection. The first time he got one, I gave him antibiotics. The second time he got one, I, I knew it was coming. It was the same symptoms. So I put an organite pendant on him. And within a day, all the symptoms were gone. So then I made him his own special pendant. And it was a little blue star with quartz. And um, I liked it so much that I made, they made him for a friend who did a Reiki session for me in exchange for eight organite pendants, one for each of her dogs. I was, I was really happy to do this because they're rescue dogs and they really need the help. So anyway, we do make it for pets. And it, she said they were so much calmer. I think one more we can do. We have do. time for one more? OK, well, you haven't asked yet. For those who do healing work, they can use the, the material also to increase their results and also if um, I, where I work as a dog, if, can I use the a little pyramid or something that they would benefit? And does the negative energy stay in, in the, uh, we need to clear to clean them all regularly also? Um, I'll take your last question first about cleansing. I know a lot of people do it. I personally have never cleansed a piece of organite and never felt the need to. But if you need to, go do it. The second 
if it's alive, it will benefit from organite. If it needs more life force to heal, organite will help. Does that answer Mo? Okay. I think that's all the time we have. Thank you guys so much. It's been really wonderful sharing. All right. Come visit us at our booth, and you can get organites from us and from John Robson, and ask any more questions you have. John Pleasure Harold.